What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 32 of our Matplotlib tutorial series as well as the conclusion to this uh, updated series. In this part what we're going to be talking about is a slightly more complex version of the wireframe as well as kind of where to go from here as far as your understanding of Matplotlib is concerned. So uh, first of all let's kind of clear up some space so basically from here all the way down to the labels I'm just going to delete to make some space. Now, uh, the first thing that I want us to go ahead and do is we're going to say x comma y comma z equals axes 3d uh, dot get underscore test underscore data. That's just going to give us some test data. If you're curious, we can also print uh, axes 3d dot underscore underscore file underscore underscore. And what that does, I've shown it plenty of times before. I can't remember if we did it in the series or not, but that shows like the location of that file, right? of the file that creates this like little module. So if you're ever curious about like seeing your source code somewhere, that's how you can figure out where it is. So now we're going to say ax1.plot underscore wire frame. And then you can plot the x, the y, the z. Now, if you have a really slow computer, don't run this, but I'm going to go ahead and run it just to show you. Um, and what you should get up is a graph like this. Now, I record in five frames a second, so it probably still looks pretty glitchy to you, but if you make this graph like really big, you can see kind of there's like a little bit of divides here between those things. Uh, but for the most part, it's almost a solid graph. Uh, so there are some elements that we can change here uh, called the stride. So uh, let's close this and this, and we will add um, our stride and C stride and R stride and C stride we'll just make them both five and five and this will create a distance between the two uh, elements so with five now it's a, a much you, it's you know clearly there's a quite the distance between these two elements uh, and you can kind of see more of like what's where things are actually it's almost easier to see what's going on in this chart than the other one because everything was all like one big blob but anyway so you can do that but uh, we're using that test data because I don't think I think most people probably don't have like the required you know data to create a wireframe like that. We could talk about writing an equation, or we can just use uh, the provided uh, equation from Matplotlib. Uh, also, let's go ahead and get that link too to that file. So this is the link to uh, that Axis 3D. So we can actually head there. Uh, see uh, Python 34. Let me bring it over. Then you got lib site packages, so lib, and then site packages. That was MPL toolkits. And then in there, it's matplot3d, and then axes3d with an E. Edit that, and here's your code. And then you can kind of control uh, F, get test. That takes you to get test data, and there you go. That's the formula that's generating this code anyways, if you're curious. So anyways, that's kind of the last thing I really wanted to show you with matplotlib. Now, uh, moving forward, kind of, you know, what can we do from here? There's really a lot of options for you. There's still a lot more that matplotlib can do for you. I uh, just really didn't cover it, but uh, you can always go to matplotlib.org. And the first thing you should do is there's examples. Examples is good. There's a, it's a lot of examples, but you can go to gallery and you can either click on this, but the easiest thing to do is like full screen this and just start scrolling down and like look at the images. Yeah, like generally you have in your mind what you're interested in possibly doing or not. Maybe you're looking for something to do or something. You can even like zoom in a little bit if you want to see it better. Um, anyway, and then just start scrolling down, look for what you want, kind of check out all of the options here. This one's cool because it gives you all the colors. Like this is all the colors that Matplotlib uh, has. Right. That's a lot of colors. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, uh, yeah. So you can look at all this kind of stuff, and it's just a good idea to get yourself acquainted. They do update Matplotlib still, so there are changes that happen. So keep that in mind as well. Um, so yeah, there's just all this stuff that you kind of look through and just see quickly visual examples of like all the stuff you can do with Matplotlib. And then here's like the Matplotlib 3D stuff. So version, like we didn't cover the flat bars or anything. So you could check those out if you wanted. Um, and then you've got like all these surface 3D things like this and such. I'm just not really sure. I don't really have any reason to ever need those charts. So if you do, check them out. Um, so there's that stuff. Also, you can go to the top and just go to examples and then in here it has a bunch of other examples like animation examples and like 
you've got all these animation examples that are available to you. And so you can take that code and kind of check it out. Um, and you've got API examples. So for all the APIs that they have, they do, they have like a finance API, for example, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, axes, grid, then like all this stuff, like just tons of information here uh, for you to kind of look through and see what's available with matplotlib. Uh, another interesting aspect to matplotlib is Seaborn. It's kind of like a add-on almost to matplotlib. Um, you can basically download Seaborn and then at like the top of your script, just import Seaborn. And I think that's all you actually have to do is just import the C import Seaborn. Let me just click this introduction real quick. I thought I could get um, configuring. Let me just, I'm just trying to get to like a really basic uh, example. I'm pretty sure all you di tend to need to do is just import Seaborn as SNS or something. Anyway, you can kind of play around with, yeah. Yeah, so as long as you just import it, I'm almost positive that will also act a lot like a, a style sheet for you too. But you can do a lot of really cool stuff with Seaborn too. And you again, they have a gallery that you can kind of look at and scroll through and be like, wow, I really like that or whatever. Figure out what you're kind of interested in doing and then you can kind of uh, you know, copy that code basically. So uh, that marks the end of this tutorial series. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.